Okay, let's start. Um, we want to do a, a project for our research where in this particular case I've managed to do something that we can all work on but uh, where it's going to be your own input is the documentation. So according to the document that I gave you, we've got several chapters that we can work with. But I don't think we can do all chapters in one video. But here is how we can work with it. So let's say we work with chapter one. Chapter one, uh, we want a summary of the project, okay? So summary of project. We all have uh, the same project, but at this particular point, I want you to give me some data on whatever uh, content you'll be working with. It's still exactly the same title. It's still exactly the same project, but we want to be working with something that is ours. Okay, so let's say, for example, I'm dealing with uh, my project that is still the Broad Acres, whatever, uh, title, but I'm saying the owner of this project, initial project, was based in Gwanda, okay? He simply would offer services for all travelers coming from outside Gwanda. Okay, these included. Uh, accommodation, transport, and a little bit of sight seeing. Okay, this then means you're giving us a summary of what you think this project should do. Okay, so you give us maybe a timeline. How long has this been happening? You give us uh, details, okay, location, and even workers. You also give us um, your assessment, okay, what you gather. So this then becomes the summary of the project. Okay, from there we then want a project timeline where we want you to give us the proposed system, its time for development. And also the requirements, the system must do, okay? That's pretty much what we want to work with. From there, we want a history. Okay, now the history sort of goes back to the summary of the project, but it's now giving us a some background information to this. So we want you to also create some sort of a history that gives us uh, what this talks about. So in terms of our history, okay, keep it brief, keep it to the point. Um, how business 
is going. Okay, um, potential. For expansion. The development over time. Okay. And then lastly, we then want you to just tell us what actually drove you to this or what actually drove you to find out the history of this particular project. From there, we want a feasibility where our feasibility will simply look at what is required for this project to take place. Okay? So you give us your own study of what the particular project should entail. So let's say we all know this is a practical project where we then want to see how feasible this is. Okay? Now we've actually started with a desktop application. How we are dealing with uh, our project development is we want to think of the entire system but build something that shows that is, it is possible. So we are building this system to show that it is very possible to do the system and we want to know what might limit our system. So in essence, we are then saying you give us a feasibility of what uh, the system should do and how the system may be lax in certain aspects of the system. So you give us uh, a good and detailed system um, overview. Okay. So you're just giving us the feasibility. And this, we want it to be just what you would have actually discovered about the system. So one could actually look into getting the following. We're saying uh, since this system, we've got a, a guide with uh, the first guide that I gave you. So you're giving us to say, how feasible is it? For example, if we were to look at the time that we're in, we're in a time of corona, we're in a time of uh, so many things not being in order. But let's say, for example, a family of six needs to travel to a different location. They stay in Harare. They need to go to Morewa, for example. But in Murewa, they have got no family. But they are going because there is something that they need to be a part of. Okay? Maybe it could be some research. Maybe it could be uh, a wedding. It could be a funeral. It could be anything. So here's what they're saying. They stay in Harare. They want to go to Murewa. They've got no one that they know in Murewa. They've got no form of transportation. They've got no expectations into what they expect when they get to Marewa. So with our system now, we're then saying we are looking at people like that who need to travel. So if they're traveling from Marare to Marewa, they need transport, first of all. So they need to figure out what's the cheapest way of going to Marewa. From there, they also need to figure out, is there a place for them to stay in Marewa? Okay, we then get the places that are available. We then get the transport that is available. We then get the activities that are available. So, in the case of Murewa, there may not be activities, but they can have a place to stay. They can also have uh, uh, transport. So, those are the things that we want to look into. So, we're then saying, if we're saying feasibility, is it practical to do something like this? If it is practical, give us that information, that background information to what is then required. The next one is our systems requirements. Right? 
after a feasibility, we can now get our systems requirements and we put our systems requirements in a practical form so that we can actually now be able to see what we would expect for our system. So in this particular case, in our system requirements, we then need to figure out some of the things that we have. And since we now have uh, a more sophisticated way of doing a system, I'd want your idea to build into what can actually be put as part of the system. So on the one point, we might want to have um, a clerk. Okay, so let's say we have a clerk in the system. Uh, the clerk needs a desktop with internet. Okay, so this is part of what we require of our system. However, we might also have a driver. Okay, a driver needs a, a phone, preferably with internet as well. Okay, where on this phone, we are then saying they can use WhatsApp. They can also use our application. Okay, so they access our application, they access WhatsApp, they can get to see what the system does. At the same time, we need a client who needs to communicate and access our service. Okay, so given these three things, they can actually help us to note what we require for our system. And those requirements are then what we put down and we say, this is what we want to do. And from there, we can then be able to build as we proceed with our content. However, the last bit now looks into the scope. Right? We're then saying, after having all this, let's actually define a scope to say, this is what we want to do in this particular project, and this is how we'll get to do it. So after having done that, we can now be able to state uh, what our project scope is. So we're then saying, because we've got an area where we might need to do WhatsApp, we might need to do internet, we might need to do whatever, you then narrow it down and say, we are going to develop and test the Visual Basic application until it's complete. However, you can you can play around with this and give your own information. And with that information, we can now be able to get and complete uh, our work. Okay? So that's pretty much a summary of what our chapter one should look at and how it should do whatever we hope it does.